Hey guys and gals, it's your buddy Drew from Living History and Mysteries and the Midwest Parahistoric Society. So often on this channel I get to bring you guys those little tidbits of history or of the mysteries that history left behind. Today, I get to bring you something of a little bit more personal note. 161 years ago today, one of my personal heroes and one of my personal ancestors gave his life fighting for his country. It was an incident that made him not only a hero, but a martyr in the eyes of the United States. Today, we're going to take a look at my own ancestor and listen to a little bit of the life of Colonel Elmer Ellsworth with the New York Zouaves. Stay tuned. Colonel Elmer Ephraim Ellsworth, born April 11, 1837, died May 24, 1861. He was a United States Army officer and law clerk who was the first conspicuous casualty and the first Union officer to die in the American Civil War. He was killed while removing a Confederate flag from the roof of the Marshall House Inn in Alexandria, Virginia. At the outbreak of the Civil War, Colonel Ellsworth moved to New York, where he raised the 11th New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment and dressed them in the Zouave-style uniform, which was very popular at the time. After the 11th training was completed, they were moved to Washington, D.C., and then on to Alexandria in the newly seceded state of Virginia. Now, during this move, Colonel Ellsworth spotted and kept his eye on a large Confederate flag flying atop a building across the river. Now upon arriving in Alexandria, he found the building that this Confederate flag was flying upon, took a small group of men, climbed up on the roof to cut it down. After removing this flag, as Colonel Ellsworth and his men were going back down the stairs, the owner of the inn jumped out, fired two shots with a shotgun, one of which killed Colonel Ellsworth instantly. Now, of the other men that were with Ellsworth, Francis Brunel turned his musket on the owner of the hotel, firing a shot, hitting him in the head, before repeatedly bayonetting him. This incident that occurred just a month after the fall of Fort Sumter was very well publicized, making Colonel Ellsworth a martyr for the Union cause. And his name and likeness was featured on everything from songs to postal envelopes. Now after this occurrence, several pieces were taken from the inn, including, morbidly enough, pieces of bloodstained carpet and chunks of the flag that Colonel Ellsworth himself had cut down. As for Private Brownell, though he wouldn't see it for almost another 15 years, his action got him awarded one of America's first Medal of Honor. Due to Colonel Ellsworth's friendship with President Abraham Lincoln, his body laid in state in the White House before his funeral and President Lincoln later eulogized him as the greatest little man I ever met. As mentioned before, this event was very highly publicized, so several of the artifacts still exist today from that fateful day in history. Here you can see the shotgun used by the hotel owner to kill Colonel Ellsworth, as well as the musket used by Private Brownell to avenge his leader's death. Both Colonel Ellsworth and Private Brownell's uniforms have survived, 
Here you can see Colonel Ellsworth's uniform still bears the wound that took his life. This is what remains the flag taken from the end that day. It's very hard to comprehend the size in this photo, but it was actually quite enormous, measuring a 24 by 14. Uh, very big in standards of personal owned flags at that time. The damage you see on the flag is less from decay and more from uh, souvenirs from the troops that uh, wanted pieces of the flag that took their commander away that day. I again want to show you this picture of Private Brunel. Uh, as you notice, he has not one but two saber bayonets. He also wears a black armband in mourning of the slain Colonel Ellsworth, and he stands upon a Confederate flag, possibly the one pulled down from the inn that faithful day. Due to his sacrifice in the line of duty, the honor his men held for him and the respect by other officers, remember Ellsworth became a rallying cry and call to arms for the Union Army. Oh.